Welcome to Backcountry Renegade. I'm Jeff. This channel is all about hiking, backpacking, the outdoors, and all the gear in between. And if you're into those things too, consider subscribing. I used many tents before and the Tarp Tent Double Rainbow LI is my favorite tent so far. The LI stands for lithium. That is the Dyneema composite version of this tent. And the LI version is a much higher quality version of the Double Rainbow, which is two thirds the weight compared to the Sil Nylon version. Tarp Tent says that the Double Rainbow LI is their lightest arch pole supported shelter, which has ample floor space and dual side entry with dual vestibules. It is also a freestanding capable tent with trekking poles, and you can add an additional liner to make it a hybrid double wall tent as well to reduce condensation. In other words, this tent has it all. I've been using this tent for about a year and a half and I've been pretty satisfied with it. I've used it in all different types of weather conditions and different terrains and this tent has been solid for me. But being Dyneema, this tent comes in at a pretty hefty price. It's $725. If you do choose to buy an optional liner or some of the other accessories, it will add to that cost as well. That's over twice the price of the regular Sil Nylon version. But while it is a bit pricey, you definitely get what you pay for. It is a very high quality ultralight tent that is extremely versatile. Out of all the different Dyneema tents out there, I chose this one because it is one of the most versatile in that I can set it up in many different types of terrain. It's also one of the most spacious while also being one of the most lightest options out there. So why Dyneema? What makes it so special for tents? Well, Dyneema composite fabric, formerly known as Cuban fiber, is a laminate fabric that is comprised of thin sheets of ultra high molecular weight polyethylene. This is sandwiched between two sheets of polyester and when all formed together, it creates a super durable uh, structure while also being water repellent. This is a material that is highly sought after in the ultralight backpacking community because of its really high uh, weight to strength ratio. Most tents these days are actually made of sil nylon, which is a lot cheaper, but heavier, and it can also wet out if you get a torrential downpour. Well, what about the pros of Dyneema? First off, Dyneema is inherently 100% waterproof, and it doesn't require any extra special coatings or anything like that to repel water. So it prevents it from stretching and sagging when it does rain. Another pro of Dyneema is it has an amazing strength to weight ratio. Because of that, you can use a lot thinner fabrics while maintaining the strength and durability needed to have a pretty solid tint. As a result, you have a much lighter tent as well. So there are several cons of Dyneema. First of all, it is a much more expensive material. So it is harder to source and more costly to do so. It also is a lot harder to work with. It's more labor intensive. So that's gonna add to the price overall as well. It's also a bit more fragile in that it can get punctures. You also need to roll it when you're putting it away rather than just stuff it because it can get creases and stuff. So when you order your Tarp Tent Double Rainbow LI, you will get your stuff sack. This is the Dyneema stuff sack that Tarp Tent provides. It is long and so it's kind of awkward to store into my, uh, my backpack. So what I did is I went ahead and got this Hyperlite small pod and this is perfect for my backpack. It also keeps it uh, water repellent as well with this water seal zipper. And it just stuffs on in here. I can roll it in there. I can put it in here pretty nicely. You're also gonna be supplied with some carbon Easton poles here for the tent. You have your main body pole, which is where the name comes from, the rainbow that goes all the way across the body. And then you have your smaller one, which is the cross strut, which widens up the tent very nicely to provide a lot of livable space. Now these are made of graphite, so you do have to be careful with them from my experience they've been plenty durable especially in the wind and stuff but you need to be careful you don't bang them or bend them or crack them because they will splinter uh, pretty easily under enough weight you also get some tent pegs inside this small Dyneema stuff sack here and if you open it up you get these Easton pegs these are pretty nice and super lightweight I really like these you do have to be kind of careful with them and uh, use them in not so much rocky areas because they can bend a little bit if you're pretty rough on them the packed weight of this tent is is about 27 ounces. That's two thirds the weight of the Sil Nylon version, which comes in more at 42.5 ounces. So significant weight savings that you're getting with the LI there. As far as the layout and dimensions, it's roughly the same as the Sil Nylon version. It is 88 inches long by 50 inches wide and about 40 inches of headroom. The floor area, you're getting about 30.5 
five square feet. So pretty significant given how much livable space you have in this tent. The materials used for the floor and stuff sack are one ounce of square yard of DCF material. The main body is 0.51 ounces squared yard of that DCF. Another thing I like about it is you have the Dyneema uh, bathtub floor here. You also have some sill nylon up here, but then you have bug mesh here. So you have three different types of materials that really help you as far as breathability but also keeping the bugs out. So pretty cool with that. So let's talk about the pitch. The pitch is relatively pretty easy. You run the arc pole basically through the sleeve of the main body of the tent. The pole tips are gonna go into the pole pockets and you then fit the cross strut to widen out the tent. You then get six stakes needed to tent out the stake. You have four on each corner and then two for each vestibule. From there, you're gonna tension the corners as needed to get it nice and taut. There are some options you can further stretch out the floor with some little tabs. You can anchor it down and peg down as well to further get the uh, livable space out there nice and taut. If you're expecting windy conditions, there are also some options where you can further anchor the main center pole structure, uh, but you'll need some additional guy lines and additional tent pegs to do so. You also have the option to make this tent into freestanding mode. Now, this is one of the reasons I chose this tent because it gives you so much versatility with it. You can stand this tent and set it up on many different types of surfaces. For instance, I was camping in the Enchantments not too long ago, and the majority of the core set up there is all on granite. You cannot really stake in tent pegs or anything, but in freestanding mode, you can actually use trekking poles to further solidify the base and make it freestanding. Basically how you do this is you extend your trekking poles all the way. You put the handle in the handle sleeve, the clip then clips in the middle there, and then the end goes into a sleeve. Now, if your trekking poles are kind of short, uh, you can actually use trekking pole extenders here. This is basically some aluminum that extends your trekking pole a couple inches there. If you need it to extend even further, you can just put an extra tent peg right in there and it go ahead and extend it further. You just put it in that sleeve there and it makes it nice and taut. Having this freestanding mode really let me choose this tent over others like the Z-Pax Duplex because I can set it up on rocky area as well, but also sandy area where it makes it really hard to peg in a tent. Another cool mode that you have with this tent is porch mode. In porch mode, you can bring out the two doors pretty easily and have trekking poles to stand them up. You will need some additional guy lines and two extra tent pegs as well. There is a little flap in the middle that's Dyneema that you can roll on out that connects to the two doors and it connects with this Velcro here as well. It allows you to sit underneath the canopy area and you can cook or or you can just uh, hang out there uh, to prevent you from having rain fall on you. Now, another cool thing about this tent is you have what you can make it into a hybrid double wall. Now, it is a single wall tent. That being Dyneema goes up for the main canopy area. You don't have your rain fly in between a bug mesh or anything like that. But you can purchase an additional liner that does make it a hybrid double wall tent. And this really helps reduce condensation. Now, for single wall tents, condensation can be really really bad, especially if you have two people in there and it's cold at night, uh, you can get condensation and that can make your sleeping bag wet. It can drip on your face while you're sleeping, really make it a miserable night. Now tarp tent does a really good job battling the condensation. In addition to the liner, they actually have the arc feature that allows the condensation to run towards the ends. At the ends there, you also have these little vents there that the water can just drip out pretty easily, and it's not gonna get on you or your goods that are in the tent. But I do highly recommend purchasing that liner, especially if you see yourself in colder conditions or having two people in the tent. The polyester condensation resistant liner uh, really enhances the comfort significantly. It provides just enough air gap between the main canopy and that liner there to allow the condensation to run down and not drip on you. At the top of each doorway, you also have this vent here. And the vent here does a good job because it can open up and allow you to have sufficient airflow, but it also is designed in such a way that it won't let rain or uh, dust in very easily as well. Now, one of the cool things that I love about the tarp tent double rainbow is that it is pretty 
storm ready. It's actually labeled as a three plus season tent. That means it can be used for your typical three season backpacking, but you can also use it in extended seasons in the shoulder season when it gets a bit more windy or a little bit of light snow. Now it's not meant for like mountaineering four season kind of tent. I wouldn't take it above, really above the tree line, but it can do a really good job here uh, in the weather conditions. I've had it up to about 45 miles an hour wind and the tent stood really firm and there was no issues at all. Another thing that makes it pretty storm ready is the sill nylon bottoms on the side there. It really helps reduce dust from kicking in or dirt or rain from splashing in. Rather than just having it bug mesh all the way down, that really would get the dust and, and raindrops come in. So they have the sill nylon and I thought that was really good, uh, genius actually, and it actually is only 10 near so you're still saving tons of weight. Another thing at the end of each tent areas, the head and foot area of the tent, you do have this little uh, band here that you can either clip in to really extend the air ventilation, have the mesh and everything there to get really good airflow. So if you don't anticipate rain, have this and it'll really help reduce condensation. If you are expecting rain, you can actually unclip it and clip up the floor, which raises it and closes that opening area of the mesh. And it really helps reduce rain from splashing back in. Tar Tent is known for their excellent build quality and the double rainbow is no exception to that. Because Dyneema doesn't stretch when water is absorbed, it requires the material to be carefully and precisely cut and stitched together. And the double rainbow precisely is that. It also has waterproof YKK zippers and these work pretty smoothly. They can be a little hard to grip at times, especially if you're wearing gloves in the cold. And so I recommend maybe putting some little tabs there to make it a little bit easier to grip there. I have noticed at times that uh, they are pretty smooth, but as long as you don't go too quick where some of the material or, or the Dyneema kind of gets caught into those zippers. So just be careful as you're zipping it or unzipping it. It does also have two doors, which is super convenient, especially if you have two people in the tent. That way, during the night, if one has to go to the restroom, they have their own separate door to do so. Also, they also have two vestibules there. So each person can have their storage and backpack and luggage and everything there on in each vestibule. If you're using this as a solo person tent, uh, there's tons of space in here. You can have one vestibule to store your gear, the other vestibule to cook in, and you'll have tons of room and space in it. Another cool feature of this tent is it actually has magnetic ties that you can roll up the fly and hold it back. And you can also roll up the door with that mesh bug liner, and you can also roll it up uh, with that same kind of magnet there. There's an extra tab there of Dyneema with a magnet there, and uh, you can roll those up and clip it in really nicely. One of the things Things the Double Rainbow is really known for is the sizable living area. The arc pull system is just awesome to maximize the volume of the inside of the tent. For the solo hiker who is using this, this is like a palace as it's been said. I can have all my gear inside and I can enjoy plenty of room with a full size sleeping pad at that. If you do have two people in here, you can use two 25 inch full size sleeping pads. And that's something not of other, a lot of other tents can claim. If you are a bit taller, this provides enough headroom ceiling to go ahead and sit up and you're not gonna bang your head on the top of the roof of the tent. You also have some interior storage options as well. There are two side pockets on each door on the inside of the tent. On my tent, it's actually this little triangular pocket here. Not as useful. I don't use it as much, but on the updated 2020 version, uh, they actually updated these to squares, which is a whole lot more usable space to store and stuff your gear. They also make a gear loft called the Rainbow Roost, which you can purchase for additional amount, which allows you to have a few extra things on top. If you have a headlamp and you want to light up the tent, that's a nice place to put it there as well. The first pro obviously is the main reason I chose to go do with Dyneema is that Dyneema doesn't wet out. Having a tent that is made of sill nylon will eventually absorb water. The thinner the tent, the faster it will absorb the water. In a wet out, it'll sag. And if you're going to go backpacking the next morning, it's gonna add to the weight of your pack 
if you don't have it dried out. Another pro is the excellent strength to weight ratio. Because it's so strong, you can use a whole lot thinner material, which in turn saves to the overall weight of the tent. Another pro is it is extremely versatile. I can set it up on many different types of terrains in many kinds of conditions as well, from sand to snow to rocky areas. Because of the freestanding mode, it allows me to either use it freestanding and not worry about uh, staking it out, or if I have the option to stake out, I can and go ahead and use my trekking poles to make a porch mode. Another big pro is the dual doors, dual vestibule options. It allows two people to get in and out with ease. If you're all by yourself, you can open up each door and get ample airflow as well. Now there are a few cons to the Tarp Tent Double Rainbow Li, and the biggest con really is the price. It is an expensive tent. It is one of the most expensive tents out there on the market today, but you are getting what you pay for. Another con is it is a single wall tent, which can be a bit more prone to condensation, but with the additional liner and those things as well with the airflow. Uh, it really helps to reduce that. Another con of the Double Rainbow Li being a single wall tent is you can't enjoy stargazing like you can with a double wall tent where you can just take off the rain fly and sit under the bug mesh. You can't really do that with the Tarp Tent Double Rainbow Li. Another con is Dyneema requires a bit extra tender love and care. You have to roll it very delicately. You have to make sure you are not setting up on a rocky surfaces that's going to puncture it as well. And so it does require a bit more extra care. Another con of the Tarp Tent Double Rainbow Li is because the materials are so thin, it can be a bit transparent. Now, if you use the liner, it drastically reduces this, but it is a lot more transparent than other, say, sil nylon tents out there. So what did you think of the Tarp Tent Double Rainbow Li? Is this a tent you'd want for your backpacking system? Leave me a comment in the comment section. Let me know your thoughts. If you like what you saw, make sure you give me a thumbs up. Also subscribe for more backpacking gear review content like this. And as always, thanks for watching.